Okay, so then we're on to step three. So remember, you will only use Pearson's R if both variables are scale. Neither of the two distributions are highly skewed, and the scatter plot is not curvilinear. What would a curvilinear scatter plot look like? Well, as mentioned uh, just a few moments ago, it would look, uh, for example, like a rainbow. Um, and where might you see a curvilinear scatter plot? You would see it, uh, for example, if we were plotting a uh, level of anxiety on our x-axis and test performance on the y-axis. This is actually a well-known phenomenon. Um, if someone is experiencing really low levels of anxiety, so low that they don't even study or open the book, um, their test performance, unsurprisingly, is, is not going to be very good. Uh, if someone is really super anxious, man, they've been studying, they've hardly got to any sleep, they pulled an all-nighter, uh, and, and now is the exam, and they look at the exam, and maybe you've had this experience, they just draw a blank, like it's all gone. Well, test performance isn't going to be so good in that case. The person who's going to, you know, kind of do really uh, the best is someone whose anxiety level was uh, high enough so that they actually studied and spread it out across several days, not just the night before. Um, and then when they go to take the exam, uh, they're likely to perform really well. How can you use this in your own life? Well, if you ever are at an exam and you're really anxious and you're starting to draw a blank, you might want to just take um, five minutes to just close your eyes and relax because just by relaxing that could help bring your anxiety level down and your test performance could go up. Don't relax so much you fall asleep, <laughs> that won't help your test performance. Um, but if you are at mid-level uh, of arousal, uh, enough to have studied and, and to focus, you're going to do best. Okay, so Pearson's R uh, works really well except it does not handle this curvilinear situation. Uh, if you um, give it uh, data for um, arousal level and test performance, even though we see this beautiful relationship here in the scatter plot, it would tell you that the correlation was somewhere around zero. So it, it just doesn't work. It assumes that the data is, is not uh, this curvilinear pattern. All right, so we looked at uh, our SPSS output at their two histograms for sleep and anxiety. Um, they looked actually wonderfully uh, normal. Uh, and you might see a you know a value here or there. It seems to stand out a little bit, but none of those would be considered outliers. By the way, they're they're still pretty darn close to the distribution as a whole. Remember, we're only going to consider the distribution highly skewed if it jumps and screams out at us. This you know really long tail, um, definitely skewed. And when we looked at our scatter plot for sleep and anxiety, uh, definitely did not appear uh, curvilinear to us. So the decision was to go ahead and actually use SPSS to calculate the correlation. And to do that, we'll use our Analyze drop-down menu. We'll click on Correlate, and we'll choose the Bivariate uh, menu. So here we are, Analyze drop-down menu. Click on um, Correlate, because we're looking at correlation, and Bivariate. By, very, by means two, like bicycle means two wheels. And we've already moved anxiety over, and we've also moved sleep over. Pearson's is checked for Pearson's R. And we'll stick with the default of uh, two-tailed and flag significant correlations. Say OK. And here's the output. Now, when you get the output for correlation uh, from SPSS, a lot of this information is actually redundant. So I'm just going to talk about the top right box. So top right box looks at the relationship between anxiety, shown here on the left, and sleep, shown here at the top. So our anxiety row, our sleep column, where they intersect, we're getting the meaningful information. That negative 0.365, that's Pearson's R. The 0 0.036, that's telling us what's the probability, due to sampling error, that you could get this correlation in your sample, even if in the population it was zero. All right, how could I say that more meaningfully? Um, we talked about shoe size uh, and uh, test performance. There is no relationship between shoe size and, and test performance. But what if you happen to sample 33 people and you got something that looked like a strong correlation? This would tell you the probability of that happening due to chance. Don't worry about it now. We'll talk more about it uh, with inferential statistics. And then the 33 is the size of our sample. So with our handout, uh, again, you see strength and direction of the correlation. That's the negative 0.365. Um, probability of correlation this strong, either positive or negative, occurring due to chance, that's 0 0.036, and size of the sample or population, that's 33. Um, since we're going to be talking about Pearson's R as a descriptive statistic right now, we're only going to focus on the strength and direction of the correlation, which is negative 0.365. So now we know the mean and standard deviation for anxiety and sleep, we have the scatter plot, and we also know uh, Pearson's R as a way of describing the relationship between those two variables.